Well, here we are for part two of my conversation with the one and only. I'm just Matt. Matt. There's, there's lots Morse. of us. <laughs> um, again, request if you have a cow that needs to be milked, Matt has experience from growing yeah, up. You're going to need farm. to watch last week to get some clarity of that. <laughs> that sounds weird. But uh, if you okay missed last week, we encourage you to go back and listen to it. Um, we're just digging into tension and the messiness of life, and we're not trying to sugarcoat anything, and I think you're really good at that. So, yeah, when Todd said, hey, I need to talk about messiness with some messy life, like, who should I talk to? He's like, oh, Matt, he's got the messiest <laughs> life I know. So it makes sense. So, thank, so thanks for thinking of me, Todd. No, um, no I, yeah, so I don't know. We were talking last week, if you were here with us, mm -hmm. um, about some of that. I talked about, like, losing my job. Yes. And, Jen um, doing her stuff, um, having a, my wife is Jen, and she, her having to kind of hold is still holding the fort for a lot of things, and so and really of, having to put some of her dreams on hold, absolutely. because of the unforeseen circumstance of you losing your yeah, dream. yeah, which was not a dream I had either. So <laughs> like, but they, everybody, if we got everybody's dreams. every dream, every dream is on hold. Uh, oh. So yeah, so just to to fill in a little gap of that too, like what's been happening since then. Yes. I've just been sitting in a house. Now, uh, we've, uh, He's literally we've, been here. You've been sitting okay. right here at Todd's, uh, wondering <laughs> what would go on. No, I, like part of that, that mm. thing was stepping away and having a child, like, well, how do we want to, you know, raise our kid and, mm -hmm. and measuring that well, and also figuring out how do we have income. So I was doing some consulting stuff for a season mm -hmm. um, and was speaking at some different churches that mm -hmm. would have me in different ways. And then, um, I got involved with a startup out of Chattanooga. Real excited about that. I'm going to just give a shameless plug here. Do Mark it. Chaplin. Mm -hmm. uh, a brand new startup out of Chattanooga. We started like in 20, uh, December 2019 is when I came on board. I was like the third employee they had. And then um, my, my the founder, uh, another lady, and then myself. And then we had so much pickup because we were really, our goal is to do soul care for mm -hmm. uh businesses to be people that can come beside people in the business where they're at because people are walking into the, their, their work week with all kinds of stuff and really show, really hoping to work with small medium-sized businesses to find ways to come alongside those folks that really are giving so much and so uh we were looking at that we were going to launch just in chattanooga we had so much uh, momentum at the beginning of 2020 mm -hmm. like hey let's go to four cities and <laughs> so we say yeah well that means we should push back to march 2020 and nothing wrong wrong happened then <laughs> So, so, and like, it was a thing like, man, this is hitting all the buttons. And even that, like, got, okay, we feel like, man, Lord, you've opened up this opportunity to do this, to, to jump into this thing. It's like, we're not going to be make, we're not trying to make millions on this. Really, we just want to help people. Yeah. And we want to come beside people, love people right where they are. Yes. That was our goal. And it still is our goal. Uh, but 2020, man, it was 2020. And so it was, mm. we've, we had, we've, we've had a, like, Basically, we were relaunching in January of 2021 in a lot of ways, just trying to get our feet on the ground and help, again, put ourselves in a position to help people. Yeah. But again, it's, it's all these postponed dreams. It's yes. all these held back things. And like you, when, when you're trying to support your family and be a good steward of everything God's mm -hmm. given you, not just your finances, but your, your family, mm -hmm. your child, your wife, and their well-being and their, their mental health yeah. and their spiritual health, and you're walking through this thing and you're trying to trust like, God, where are you? I want to have faith mm -hmm. that you are who you say you are. But where are you? Because I need to yeah. see some things like, where do I join in and what should I join in? What parts should I compromise or should I compromise anything? Yeah. And so the messiness is all in all of that. You're right. You know, just because because things haven't changed in the sense of, well, oh, now we're free, Jen's free to step away from her job, or, hey, they're gonna pay her like twice what she was paying. So it's totally worth it, because you know, educators yeah. are you know, known, for their, <laughs> known for their great salaries. And, yeah. and, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, mm. you know, in places where you think like, okay, you're gonna let up, Lord, like there's just been, there's been, and I can get into everything, but like there's just been like tension in the workplace, there's been tension in places that we volunteer. Um, and I don't think it's just us, it's just, it's just like, hey, there's it's like other people's messes running into other people's messes and it causes more messes yeah. and, and causes strain. And like, mm. you know, there's only so much. We talked about this a little bit last last week, but like, gosh, there's so there's so much that we just we've been through the church. Hey, let's pretend everything's fine. <laughs> everything's great. How's mm -hmm. it? Oh, and I'm I'm I mean, there's is a issue, I mean, Jenna, I've talked about this like is it issue of pride? Like mm -hmm. would you when you sit like, we're in community group together. And I'm just being very uh, real here. It's like very rarely do I talk about my job stuff mm -hmm. in 
uh, in community group because like I'm frustrated yeah. and like I want to, you know, okay, Lord, like, open the door mm-hmm. that got meant. Like figure yes. it out or do I need to be doing something different? Where are you in this? And because we like those pretty pictures, me being that person too, like, mm-hmm. that, well, I don't want to talk about it if it sounds bad. And we, and we miss out on the grace of God mm-hmm. when we do those things. I, I'm guilty of it. I think we're all guilty of it to a certain extent though, because I think, I don't know. I think like mm. we we I've, I've this is no offense to Disney like Disney you you help hey Walt man my kid loves your stuff um, <laughs> that's awesome you know but but we want this Disney princess kind of thing yes. and, and we read scripture that way yes. right don't yep. we, like we we tend to make ourselves the hero of the story mm-hmm. you know we we read a passage and we think like oh yeah like I'm I'm most likely Jesus in this or <laughs> when Jesus is calling people out like relig- relig- the religious leaders out it's like oh pff, obviously I'm with the disciples and he's not talking to me and it's like no if we look at it yeah we all can't be the hero yes. one <laughs> like <laughs> so and the other part is like more than likely we have in the south with being in a christian culture we probably look much more like the Pharisees mm. on the Old Test or the Old and New Testament than than the Jesus followers in a lot of ways because yeah. we 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 are caught up in rules and regulations and miss the opportunity to love people where they are. You're right. Yeah. Um, and even the disciples mess it up too. So congratulations, guys. We're, mm-hmm. all, we all we all we're all bad at that. Um, but but I think I think another part of this too is like when we read scripture, it doesn't have the it, scripture doesn't have the nice neat ending for everything. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people's lives who were filled with a lot of sorrow. And we, we, but again, we condition, we read, you know, stories to our kids. We don't tell the kids about Noah's Ark, like, and all the people died outside. Like, <laughs> we talk about uh, that in community groups. You know, yes. Like, hey, we don't do right. that one. Uh, That's not know. like on the mural. Yeah. What happened, what happened to Noah after the flood? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We don't talk about that one. I don't think we can talk about it here, even even in your house. Uh, <laughs> you know, but there's just like, there's messy parts of scripture. <laughs> yeah. Like, the disciples, like all of them except for John, were like murdered and killed. Mm-hmm. And Judas, his ending didn't go well either. Like there's mm. there's a lot of suffering and there's a lot of pain in Scripture. There's a lot of time that passes in Scripture that we just read past. Yes, like we, you read in, in 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 the gospel accounts of like Jesus healing a blind man. We miss the part where this guy has been blind since birth. Yeah, we don't take into account what it was for him to live all those years without seeing what was his mindset about who god was mm. for all those years Oof. who was saying things like oh he's probably sinned he's probably done something wrong that's why i mean that was the same thing the disciples said when they yep. saw like who, who messed up him or his parents and he's getting hammered with that his whole life yeah his whole yeah. life and, right. and not and not just for that one moment that we get a glimpse of in scripture or there's a passage um uh in john where I think John, I'm going to get it wrong. So it's in John. Just read the book. It's great. Uh, <laughs> five stars. But in, there's a passage in John where there's a guy who has been lame and, and Jesus heals him. Mm-hmm. But we, we we skim over the part where it says he's been lame for 38 years. Yeah. And and I'm not inviting like suffering. In, I don't want to invite 38 years of suffering in my life. I don't want that. But what I need to realize is that some of the things I'm going to walk through in life are going to be with me for a while. Some of the things that people are walking through in their life are going to be things that they're going to they're going to they're going to have to walk through for a while, mm-hmm. and we just can't dismiss it with like Christian platitudes. Yes, and just like yeah. simple phrases that, well, God's got this, and you know, and it doesn't mean that God doesn't have it, but like if I'm saying those phrases, then I need to be inviting myself into the empathy for them and yeah. with them, to try to understand what it feels like. When we read scripture, we should be asking for that heart of empathy for what it feels like to be the Samaritan woman that comes to the well. Like, mm-hmm. what is it like for her? Mm-hmm. What is it like for her to experience it? What's going through her mind? Mm-hmm. What what emboldens her to want to go back to people who have hated her? Yes. And probably, the, and I don't know where those other four husbands were at, you know, or five husbands, <laughs> yeah. but, but she even tells them, if they're in town, she's telling them about this man who's the Messiah. Like, there is something that has to change when we experience Jesus. But we understand that Jesus came and sat next to her mm. or she sat next to him. Like she was there and he invites her to be with, to be where she's at. And that's this picture of who Jesus is. It is. Like we, we miss that so much, Todd. Um, I miss it so much. I do too. And, and it's not, and we could blame COVID or whatever, but like, we're quick to comment on people's, I think social media is great. It connects us to people we never talked to or ever mm. in our lives. 
but it also disconnects us because it just allows us to give more platitudes and less presence to, to even Can you say, say that one more time? Yeah. Give more. Well, what did I say? You said give more. It, social media allows us to give more platitudes and less presence. Yeah, yeah. Write that yeah. down. I need to write that down. Quote that. Put it on yeah. your wall if you're talking. Unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> like, that is really space. good. But no, I think, I, think we, I think we have lived this easy platitude. Uh. Let me say it and make you feel better. Let me sit in a sermon and get get a, a word for the day or a word for the thing, and and let me let me run with this for a little while, and then. But I th- I think like most maybe I'm wrong. If you've been in church most of your life, maybe you felt this. Where like it feels like I'm just recycling on these. I'm hearing the same message over and over, and I'm not growing any. I'm not getting mm. deeper in my walk with God. And part of it's because we're not tra- trained to do so. Mm. Like that we don't know how to like get in the word very well. And it's not, it doesn't mean like you've got to like rock, walk around with scrolls in your hand, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, am I walking through scripture with people? Am I walking through scripture asking the Holy Spirit to grow grow me and push me and, and change my heart? Or is it just, I'm looking for something to prove a point? Yes, yeah. I'm looking for something to, oh, to, yeah. to, to, to give the next, you know, to, to get more people in the in the in the room, mm-hmm. that was the thing that used to happen before COVID. Like people would like to get a lot of people in the room, um, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And let, but and I, and I think like and you and I've had that conversation oh, yeah. about even like you know building, uh, you know, trying to expand the the mm-hmm. the, the, the seating spaces at public church, mm-hmm. and it's like it can't be about the building; it has to be about, about the people because yes. the building won't always be there. And we've seen that, right? Oh yeah, you know, uh, ever ever so much. And like so. Mm-hmm. I think, and I appreciate like, you know, even last uh, last Sunday where you share like, hey, we haven't done as well as we should have helping disciple you as we go. And I think if, if you, you can tell the health of a church, I'm, this is no, this is no take on public or anybody else. I'm not trying to like, okay, get your, you know, rubric out and figure out, you know, <laughs> what church is healthy or not. But if there aren't actual pathways to help you grow in yeah. your faith, that church isn't healthy. If you're with a living life with other Christians and they're not leading you or leading themselves in places that grow them further mm-hmm. in their walk with God, that's probably not healthy either. Look at we should look at our own lives. Like yeah, if I'm good. not getting pushed to change how I view the world so I can view it more like Jesus did, mm-hmm. which his view of the world was everybody there hates me. <laughs> I'm going I created them, I created them good. They blew that up. Yep. They hate me. They say they love me, but then they just do stuff that shows that they hate me. Mm. And he still consistently loves us to the degree that he came to this earth so he could get spit on by us. Mm. Wow. Like, like, we've got this twisted view, Todd. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the church does to a degree. And I say again, big C church, mm-hmm. not just public, not, not just public, but like not public church or any church in particular, but I think just in general, Christians in the church, we have a hard time understanding what the presence of Christ looks like. Mm -hmm. Because what Christ did, he came to the earth and suffered here on this earth like you and I do. Mm -hmm. Died on the cross and rose from from the dead and defeated death to show his love for us. He came and lived among us. Moved in the neighborhood like the message talks Uh, about. Like he created the neighborhood so he might as well move in. Like (laughs) he's he was here with us. And what Christians tend to do is we think the slogan's good enough for us to have. Let me, and we we can't do something good for somebody. You can't love somebody without like stamping our name on it. Mm. We can't do it without saying like, "Look at my church," or "Look what I've done." And and we take credit for things that God's called us to do. So it makes us feel that achievement thing we talked about last week. Yeah, like look what I've done. It's like that doesn't hold up. Mm-hmm. It doesn't hold up. If we can love people without strings attached and just love them where they are, love them That's like good. Jesus did, what a difference it makes. And it can make, and it should make. I think that's what God has called us to. And anything short of that is like a miss. Yeah, you're right. And mm-hmm. and when we don't do it, it doesn't mean we should just sit in sackcloth and ashes and feel bad. And if, if somebody else doesn't do it, it doesn't mean we throw stones at them. Mm-hmm. It just means what, what we do, the, the control, the controllables, the circles that we're in, let's live differently there. It's good. And we don't have to print up t-shirts for it. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to like put up billboards or do whatever else to make it seem like we're doing great when inside we're rotting. Like we just should just like let this be healthy enough that other people are saying, oh, you're for me. Oh, you love me. That's good. What's different? Man, I want something like that. And you care about me and you, you don't look like me. Mm. And you don't come from the same economic background I do, but you still care about me, mm-hmm. rich or poor, regardless. You don't want something from me. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need my endorsement. You just... You just want to be my friend. Mm. 
That's what Christ has done. He did it all. He achieved everything. So why are we trying to achieve something he's already done for us? That's good. And why are we trying to like like claim on it when it's something he did? Yeah. So there's that. I don't know if that's any good. We should probably cut that. I don't know. No, I think that's <laughs> huge. And even just like personally, because I'm a one, because I'm a recovering perfectionist, um, I think it can You're be really good at it, by the way. Uh, good. Thank nice. you. Yes. Good. Am I perfect at being a recovery? Yeah, no. yeah. I think it's easy for me to fall into that trap. So that's something that I need to be reminded of. Um, like you said there, why are we trying to achieve? Because Jesus already achieved everything. Yeah. And the reality is if we read his word, it's clear we can never measure up. No. And like, not, there's yeah. not enough we could do. No. So yeah. and I'm, like, I'm an Enneagram too. So you go through your Enneagram, it's probably going to be a place where you try to replace God with you in it, mm-hmm. or what he's done for you in it. So I'm Enneagram too, like I wanna help people, I love yeah. helping people, at least I'm, I think I'm Enneagram too, I don't even know for sure, it I says I am. personally. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so, but like, here's the thing, is like, mm-hmm. am I trying to do that because it makes me feel good? Am I helping people because of what it can do for me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or is it because God's gifted me to do that, and I'm secure enough in that relationship with him, that if no one ever notices that I've done something good, wow. no one ever sees it, is that enough? Okay, so you said something there. Okay. Can we go there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secure. You Ooh. said that I'm secure enough, and I just got stuck on secure. I'm not sure what you said after that. I'll work on my active either, listening okay. skills. Um, <laughs> go more on that. And maybe even part of your journey, if you yeah. don't care about identity and security. Yeah, yeah, because for us, like, I mean, my identity was wrapped up in what I did. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I have 20 years doing ministry, like working with students and working within a church. Graduate degree in this field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I loved it. I love it. Like, like, mm-hmm. it was a part of who I was, but when it got pulled away, mm. like, there was a lot to, for me to look in the mirror and say, okay, God, do you still love me? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wife, do you still love me? Because mm-hmm. I don't have a job right now. Do, are you sure you still love me? Mm. Like, three-year-old kid, do you still love me? Mm. Will you look back on those days at one point and think, what was dad doing? What a what a weirdo. Mm. And so like you have these thoughts of like, who am I really? God, who am I? And I, I would love to say again, like, oh, I've got it all figured out now. No, I struggle with these thoughts a lot, yeah. like on the regular, on a regular basis, and bring them before the Lord because he's big enough to carry it. Mm. And when I don't, when I don't bring them before God, when I don't talk to people about it, I guarantee you, Todd, I'm not very secure in that moment. That comes yeah. out of insecurity. When when I can't say I'm struggling here. That comes from insecurity. Mm-hmm. Jen is the greatest because she points that out, mm-hmm. and then I push back on it because I'm insecure. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it's a bad like, sign. I'm feeling it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's not true. But like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, like my. So 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 I think like we see so many people. Uh, me being one of them, like we struggle with our identity in Christ because again, the thing we talked about last week, we just try to achieve things. Yeah. And, and it's like, what, what can I do for me? What can I do to make myself look good so that at least I feel good about what I've done at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. And, and I do that outside the lens of Scripture and outside the lens of the Spirit. So, I mean, heck, if I had a billion dollars, you know, well, I'll create the Matt Moore Spiritual Library or something, you know, but then I've had to put my name on it. Uh, Why do I have to do that? Yeah. What's the point? I don't need to do that. Mm. Like if it's if it's if I'm caring for people, can I do it without having my name put on it? And wow. what that's been one of the nicest things, honestly. Like you said last week, like, hey, you know, you're still a minister. We're all called to that. Mm. It's just a fancy title you get when people want to outsource it <laughs> to a certain degree. <laughs> but when, but we like to help people along. The, the goal is to equip people, not to build an audience or build mm. a following. Yes. It's to equip people to to love better wherever they are. Um, to love more like Christ wherever they are, mm-hmm. to know Christ more wherever they are, not just when they show up in the building. Yes, that's good. And we get that twisted sometimes. Me, been there, done that. But one of the most relieving things for me, Todd, in this last two and a half, three years has been that, one, I've recognized who cared for me because of what I did, because mm-hmm. they they fall off the map. Yeah. And they've not, they said a lot of nice things, but they haven't shown a lot of nice things on the other side. But the other side is like for the people that I've been able to keep in contact with or have sent a text to when mm-hmm. I've heard something's gone south for them, 
and this sounds like I'm tooting my own. I'm not. It's just nice that people know that I care for them without all the other stuff. You're not doing yeah. this just because you're the minister. Yes, that's really. You're good. not doing this just because you're this. Nobody's paying you to do. Nobody's that, paying. So, yeah. me, nobody's paying to do anything. You can help. I'll send my Venmo. Yes. Show no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that was that but, was perfect. But no. I, but 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 for real, like my Venmo. No. Um, no. I was about to say seriously. But, uh, but no, for real, like that. Mm. The freedom to know that no one thinks you're doing this because you have some ulterior motive. Wow. Oh, you just want me to come to church? Or you're just doing this because you're... Like, my goal in loving people, I think God put this in my heart, is to love them without the strings attached part. Because I've experienced on other ends. I've seen other people do it. I'm like, no, I just want to care for you. Even though I'm not in a position to have equity or ability to care for you I'm, I'm still going to check in because I mm. still care about who you are yeah. whether you're the football coach or whether you're the president or whether you're you know the guy on the street mm. or whoever like the value God saw in me to, to come to this earth to die for me is the same I want to see people the same way yeah that's just incredible because yeah, the value he sees in me has nothing to do with any of my titles mm-hmm and the value he sees in you has nothing to do with any of your titles. Because mm-hmm. if all that's gone, you still have value because you're his. Yeah. Because he created you and breathed his life into you. And that's the same for every single person on this planet, whether they are black or white or Hispanic or they're mm-hmm. homosexual or you, you go through the list, Republican, Democrat, whatever, Jesus died for them. Yes. He sees value in them. Mm-hmm. And the minute we base something on their achievements or if they believe something different than me or not, we have missed the whole point of Jesus coming other way. Because right. he, w- he would have dismissed some of those people right away when he came. Like, oh, yeah. you're out, you're out, you're out. The ones you said, hey, you need to get straight are the religious leaders. You thought they had it together. Yeah. So there's that. So anyway, yeah. So I, I, I think, um, you know, this this journey for the messiness, this has probably been the messiest, like least linear podcast you've done. But... Welcome to my brand. I love it. It's been great. But but I think I think you know. I don't know what the future has for 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 me and Jen, and Anna Kate. What I do know is that he has us. Mm-hmm. That he's meets me every day. Not because he's had like leave from somewhere. He says he's present. Am I aware of it? Mm. Am I willing to lean into it? Am I willing to listen? Am I willing to say, okay, God, what do you want me to do today? And some days I'm really great at it. Mm -hmm. And other days I'm so bad. And I get down, I get frustrated, I get depressed, I get discouraged. I see other people seemingly to achieving good things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, why is God loving them? And they're not as nice as I am. (laughs) You know, like, why are they having success? And and like, and so it's it's difficult. So I think think a thing I I want people to realize is... Like scripture, Jesus, life, if we really, really look at it, it's a lot messier than we, we think it's going to be. And it will always be that. Mm-hmm. Like, I've done premarital counseling for people, and that's something I'll tell them is like, hey, you know, this is really fun. Your, your wedding is going to be really awesome. Even if it's in COVID, it's going to be awesome. You're going to love that, but that will not be the pinnacle of your life. Mm-hmm. So, if you've got 400 bridesmaids, that's not important. Like, it probably isn't important. If you've got that many bridesmaids, you should stop. You don't have that many friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, a, sorry. And if you do, your your husband definitely doesn't have that many friends yeah. on the other side. So just chill that part out. But That's basic. But, but, but the, the point being is everything that happens after that is what life is. And it's going to yeah. be messy. It's mm-hmm. dirty underwear. It's it's leaving stuff out. It's It's having arguments over the dumbest things. But it doesn't change the love. It's you're just in the mess with this person and you learn how to walk through it with them. Yeah. You embrace the journey as it was. And that's the same thing with our walk with God. It's like wow, we really need good. to step into our messy lives knowing that He is willingly accepting the mess of us, the imperfections within us. Mm-hmm. And He wants us to say, I, my goal in your life is that you will look like me. That's His prayer in John 17, that they would love, have a relationship like He does with the Father. We, he wants that for us. He doesn't care about how many followers we have. He doesn't care about the Bible verses memorized. He loves that, but it's not his main goal. Yeah. You know, so anyway, that's 
I probably have gone for at least four hours here. No. I'll lay down. We'll have more I'll have more <laughs> conversation and talk about my childhood <laughs> in a little bit. So. I, I just, I want to thank you, Matt. Like, I think that these are the type of conversations that we just need to have. And we have to push into the mess. Yeah. Like, and just what you said about even thinking about marriage and all of those struggles in it. But that's, that's also like part of the reward in a weird way because it's like there's so much richness to know that you got to the end and I'm, I'm not there. I'm looking at like not even the end, but my parents have been married for over 25 years. Like, oh, uh, <laughs> hopefully over 25. Over four, they're, they're, they'll be 50 this yeah. next year. Yeah. Sorry. I just yeah. went, wow. Yeah. You know, I'm not that young. I'm not that young. But like, uh, math which went haywire. Yeah. Sorry, Jennifer. But um, 50 years next January 10th. Yeah. 50 years. And to think about all the struggles they've had, but how meaningful it is that they're still together. Yeah. And they genuinely love each other. Yeah. I know they get annoyed, but they like, they love each other. Yeah. And it's like, I want to get there with Whitney. I want to get there in my relationship with Jesus. Like, mm. Because that's really, we think the richness is in the Disney princess fairy yeah. tale, but the real depth and richness is in walking through all that mess and to still be holding hands at the end of it. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's a mess. That's the thing. Like, yeah. even, like the, end, the reason why the first five minutes of Up is like the worst mm. parts of any movie is because he loses the one that he loves, the one that yeah. he's walked with all this time. Sorry for spoilers if you haven't seen Up. I just ruined it for you. Congratulations. I am- heartbroken <laughs> you should be you'll be heartbroken anyway <laughs> here's the deal though is like the reason that hurt is because the person he's walked with is gone yeah what we have in christ is someone who through all of that still walks with us Come and on. we and and i and i oh, think we've got to get past the surface stuff mm -hmm. because the question our lives are messy people are asking these questions wondering how to navigate life wondering how to navigate politics and all the things and it's not we're not letting we can't let like current events wag the dog as it were but what we have to realize is the world and people are asking how are these things affect how should i look through that and if we're just saying god's got this mm. or breakthroughs coming don't you worry like they're gonna look for other answers somewhere else yeah. because jesus steps right into the mess with us and, and i think he has answers for those things i think he tells us how to love people where they are and and what it might mean it may be uncomfortable for us yeah. but the uncomfortable part is probably good mm -hmm. because maybe that's where the adventure lies maybe i don't know i'll let you know in a few years if, if what i'm walking through right now yeah, is an adventure or not yeah. we talked about like would we laugh at this one day i was like and just like um the edited version is there's no way <laughs> there's no way you know that we would laugh at this at where we're at now but mm. but i but i pray for a day that that you know that i don't that we can look back and say, yeah, but God help hold us up through all this for sure. So, awesome. so yeah. Thank you, Matt. Well, thank you, Todd. I appreciate the opportunity. And, no. you know, um, yeah, I, I, again, it's, I think more of these conversations, they're good for all of us. They Hopefully, if, if you're a person that's out there and you're dealing with stuff, you're mad at the church, you're mad because some of these things aren't being talked about, um, or you've been pushing back, like, man, reach out. Have a conversation with somebody, have, you know, um, we can find a way you can talk to me you can mm -hmm. email me at matt at workchaplain.com mm -hmm. um that's free so do that yep um and but like seriously like you don't have to walk this alone public church has people that want to talk to you community groups if you're been like oh man it's in zoom like get over that just yeah. step in like if you're worried about your kids being wild in the background or just your house being a mess, <laughs> everyone's house is a mess everybody's kids are wild it's fine yeah Quit, we got to quit pretending to have the pristine stuff going. Like life is a mess, mm -hmm. and we need to walk through it with people in healthy ways and and, and good ways. So yeah, awesome. and I'm glad that we can do that. Yeah, with each other. Yeah, you and know? this isn't like this doesn't solve anything. Like no, just, this is just part of the conversation. It's part yes. of the journey. Yep, I think I'll end with this. Um, this summer, our friend Chris Walker really challenged me and our church and us to to wrestle. And that a lot of times we're just not good at wrestling because like you said, we want the answer. And I think it, today was about wrestling. Yeah. You just opened up and shared things you're wrestling with and challenged us to like lean into that mess versus running away from it. And so I hope that we all do that. I know yeah. that I'm challenged to do that. Well, so. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think, I think there's a lot to be gained from the wrestle. Sometimes we're just running. Sometimes we just need to wrestle with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's... 
there's a lot more I could talk about, but we're running out of time. But maybe we'll talk about it one other day, some other place. That. But uh, but yeah, I I really um, appreciate the opportunity, appreciate the wrestle. And mm -hmm. again, if you're out there, you're listening to this, and you need somebody to talk to, don't hesitate. Yep. Don't don't make an excuse um, that somebody doesn't care about you, doesn't love you. Right where you are, there's people who love you. When I when I had that, when I found out the news that you know that I lost my job, um, the first person to come that I reached out to, other than my wife, I told her. Obviously, the person that showed up at my doorstep that night and cried, or he didn't cry with me, but he was there with me as I cried, uh, was Todd, mm -hmm. because we have a relationship that there were no strings attached. They're just like, hey, dude, this is what's going on. I wasn't going to church there. It wasn't anything. I haven't like found that you contributed to your wealth. Like that's yeah. just <laughs> you know, yeah. like I'm just a guy who goes and runs with you every once in a while and and you were there for me and what i appreciate about you is you haven't like quit given you haven't given up on me mm. and jen this time you still pray for us still care about us and uh, miss everything else and so um mm. there are people like that for you out yeah. there that can love like that not just because you're friends but just because they love jesus mm -hmm. so that's good thank you and that's reciprocal well you know you do a great job of that with whitney and i so i'm glad to do it it's awesome yeah i and i'll just I echo what Matt said. At the very least, comment, like, or uh, direct message us, and look, we will get it if you want to talk, or we'll we'll work, uh, get you connected with somebody in our church that you can talk to. Like, we don't want you to walk this journey alone. Yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, um, gotta have him back, right? We gotta do this again at some point. Yeah, so, my Venmo again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. awesome. Hey, love you guys. Hope this helps. Let's lean in the mess. Jesus is there with us. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks, awesome. guys. Have a great week. See you.